All right, animators, here's what we've got going on in this scene right now. I've got a basic cube. I've got a spotlight that's shining on this wall. If I zoom out from here, you can see it's all contained within this long shoebox. I do have an extra point light in here. That's just so that when I go here to the emission shader, you can actually see my box. Um, I, I created the world light, and I set it all the way to black because uh, I didn't want any extra light coming in. I wanted it super clear what I was uh, doing here with the flickering light. So that's what I want to animate this time. So think of the flashlight, think of the street light. That's what you've got going on. You have an object that has an emission and it is radiating light, but the main light is coming from that cone light, that, uh, that spotlight that is uh, positioned just under it or just outside of it. So here we go. Now, first thing I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my timeline, make that a little bit bigger, and I'm going to go ahead and target this one, and I'll we will go down to the emission or the material properties. I need to make sure I'm on my property that has a glow to it. So I click on glow and if I scroll down here I can see I have an emission of white and it is an emission strength of 10. That's exactly where I want it normally. So to begin with, I am going to right here in the emission strength right click and choose insert keyframe. The shortcut for this is I. So I choose that and you see that the color changes on it and you see that a keyframe appears down here on the left. So when I drag this forward, let's say frame 29, I will then Press I to keyframe it, and I need to make sure my key for my uh, mouse is over here when I do it. All right, interesting. Okay, so I want mine to shut off abruptly. So I want it to go from full strength to no strength at all. If you want a light that's going to fade out, I could go here to let's say uh, 39. Let's make it 10 frames, and it goes to black. So I would take this and go to zero and I to keyframe it. And then what you've got is it goes full strength and then it fades out. All right? I want mine to go straight to black. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. It's highlighted orange. You want to make sure you don't have all of them selected. I'm just going to drag it back to frame 30 so it immediately clicks off. And I want it to be off for a few frames, so I'm going to go to frame 35, turn this back up, or no, leave this at zero, apologies, leave that at zero, and I'm going to keyframe it. Looks like I can also hit that little dot there. I didn't realize that was an option. That's pretty cool. And one frame more, then I'm going to turn it to 10 and keyframe it. All right, so it goes along, it blinks off. And I might pick that, pick it up again at, let's say it's only on for a short amount of time. So let's keyframe it at 40, go one frame, zero power. And if you leave it with any length of time, it's going to fade. So that's something to be aware of. All right, and at that one, nope, I want to go 46, and then back up to 10, power it back up. All right, so it flickers a little bit. Maybe leave it on a little longer. Let's have it flicker one more time. Keyframe it at 55. Keyframe it again at 56 with zero power. Maybe leave it off for a little bit. Turn it back on at 70. And at 71, well, leave it off until 70. And at 71, I turn it back up to 10. Oh, sorry, 71. Turn it back up to 10. And keyframe that. 
All right, let's make sure it's doing what I want it to do. All right, there we go. I have a short sequence here that goes up to frame 72. But my cone light here, my spotlight, doesn't do the same thing. So this is where I probably want to jot down some notes and figure out, okay, when do I make it do these things? So let me actually write these down and then um, I'll pause the recording and come back. All right, so I went and made some notes about what the light was doing at each point along uh, all these keyframes here so that when I come back here to my spotlight, I can coordinate that because I want the spotlight to be doing it at the same time. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. All right, so at 20, uh, sorry, zero, I have to start at zero. Start at zero. For the power, I'm going to click the keyframe button here. So 1500 watts, 29. I want that to also be 1500 watts, but then at 30, I'm going to make it a zero. And click that. Then at frame 35, I will go and make it a zero. At frame 36, it's back up to 1500. All right, frame 40. Didn't I turn that back up? I apparently didn't keyframe it. 1500. There we go. Oh, no, I didn't. All right, let's undo that. There we go. 36. I need to turn it back on. 1500. My mistake. There we go. 36 is keyframed at 1500. Apparently, I didn't actually click it to 40, which is still 1500. And at 41, it flicks off again. Keyframe that at 45, and at 46, it's back up to 1500. All the way to 55, stays on a little bit longer this time. Keyframe 56, it's off again. Oh, that's what I did. Okay, zero first, then keyframe it. All the way to 70. Oops, 70, that is correct. And 71, let's turn it back on to 1500. And bam, like so. All right, kind of like he's trying to type out Morse code. Now, if you want that to continue in a loop, if you want it to flicker just the one time, cool, you're done. If you want it to go in a loop, then you want to go change it to the graph editor. And you want both those objects selected. So let me hold shift and select that. So then you can see both should show up here in your timeline. So I've got glow and I've got spot. I'll go ahead and click and drag over all those frames. And I'm going to change the channel. And I want to go to extrapolation mode. Okay, I want to extrapolate it out and make it cyclic. So you see, then it'll pop up and play through all the way through the timeline up to frame 250. All right, so that covers that. Now, Let's say you want to take this one step further and you want to add color, okay? Because I did have one person in a class ask about doing color. So color is going to work the same way. <laughs> Nothing special here. I go over here into my timeline. So if I want to change this, I want it to start out as, as the white light. And then when it comes back on, get to where, there we go. 
there's where it turns back on. I will change the color to pink and click. And I can do the same to the emission too. And when it comes back on, it's no longer pink. It's now going to be blue or purple or whatever color that is. Now, it also means it's going to fade from that. So it's on a brief amount of time. And it's going to be blue till the end or until you change it. So that is, that's how you handle it. You want to, you want to mess with colors. You want to mess with the flicker. Uh, that's what you do. It's over here in your properties panel. You just need to make sure you're in the right, right window. And you can affect it on the graph editor. You can affect it on the timeline. Um, come on. If you decide that you want to move any of these, Okay, that is also an option. Okay, if you take and drag one of these, oh, I have a whole bunch selected right now, so actually I can click one and drag it a little bit. It's going to affect it, but it's also affecting, depends on what objects you have selected. So right now I had the light, I had the cone selected, not both. So with both selected, I need to move that one up to that so that they're doing the same thing. Anyway, have fun with it. Apply it in the way that's going to make something cool going on in your scene.